to first talk about when I first met Scott, which was at the Iowa CCI, sitting at Grassley's office. And I remember, uh, I remember very vividly that Scott was standing there with his camera, as always, on his shoulder. And uh, he was trying to sneak past the security guard. And I, that was my first ever action, and I thought that was so badass, right? <laughs> <laughs> guy, for lack of better words. Uh, and, you know, that speaks volumes about who Scott was, that he was always willing to stand in solidarity with others, right. whether it's in the racial justice movement or the Fight for 15 movement, which was right. the last uh, action I saw Scott at. Uh, we, you know, 43 workers went on strike on Labor Day, and Scott was there, again, with his camera. And uh, there was one moment where Scott almost got... Uh, hit by a motorcyclist um, and people have known Scott a lot longer than I have and uh, said you know they saw that when they saw Scott then that that was the angriest they had ever seen him and just like Scott today I'm pretty I'm pretty angry is anyone else here angry yes. and you know what I got a little bit of an anger problem because of the health insurance industry that killed Scott and is killing many others today That's right. yes. but what we have to do and model like Scott is take that anger and turn turn it into organizing and activism. That's right. Because that's what Scott did. And I want to leave with a quote from Archbishop Oscar Romero, who is someone who radicalized Scott in his life of activism, which was, those with a voice must speak for those who are the voiceless. As much as it pains me and it makes me angry today, Scott is the voiceless. And in our organizing and activism, Today, at the city council meeting in Des Moines, and the next day, and the next day, we must echo Scott's voice because he cannot use his voice anymore. Thank you.